Hello and welcome to another edition of African Stars Club Legends. Uh, in today's edition, we will be talking to one of the club stalwarts, a man who has laid the foundation for African Star success over a number of years. He oversaw uh, probably three generations of African Stars. Uh, he was the first coach who propelled African Stars to victory in the Dave's Finisher Cup final in 1975. He's none other than Mr. Odniel Kauna Kela Kauta. Kela, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for your invitation. I'm happy that you still think about me and we have a long way to go. Okay. Together. Tell us a little bit about your football journey as a coach, because during your time, if my memory set me right, there were not many coaches. A lot of clubs did not have coaches, apart from probably from Gebra, who had uh, Belemans' coach. But uh, you, how did you become a coach? Ah, it was very simple. In my school days, I was playing rugby. And from there, <clears throat> I start matching the two system. Because rugby is going backwards. Your ball is going backwards. In soccer, your ball is going forward. And by virtue of that, we start working on a system to move the ball forward. The basic of the whole thing was to, maintain, to keep the ball, to go uh, accurate passing, and to run in spaces. That was our goal, and that's what we have built. We built our team to run, to defend as our team, our whole team, and to attack as a whole team. I remember very well, you ushered the golden generation into the African star system. Mm. Um, you organized trials there. I was also part of the trials, although mm. I, think I didn't make it. Um, where, how difficult was it, the challenges to face out the old guard, bringing in youngsters? Very, very difficult because I know that because the first young generation was uh, Smondi, Kamaike. Is the youngest player which ever played for African Stars at that age. And then the old generation like Mike Park and all these type of things, they were not happy because they, they were losing positions. Okay, yes. And uh, you know what is position to nowadays for people. Huh? And uh, we, we said that you're becoming old, you're coming slowly, very slow. As you age, you become slow. Your reaction is also slow. And then we bring in the young young people in. And that's why we brought in, the first one was um, Smondi, Smondi. Followed by Kaika. Followed by Kaika, followed by Bush. And well, it, it was not rosy because you know, this Bush and, and um, Smondi, and which was the other guy, but together, they have they've been having, a, they, they, were, they were the naughty team. And Kaubani, I think so. Kaubani. They were the, they were always calling themselves the, um, uh, what is it, uh, country five. And country five, you, if you hear the word country five, you must know it's people who are overstepping the line. It's not to say that they were not, you know, we, we have to discipline them. And it was very difficult. As young people, we came in and they have the outside activities. They were more interested in, enjoying life and, uh, except at outside soccer and we were forced them to be rigged with soccer it was a very tough decisions and we have to talk to them and look for a way how to manifest and to use them effectively for the team and they succeed in that uh, during that time a lot of emphasis was always more on dribbling and shooting but uh, you introduced a certain style of side of kind of European football. Uh, how did you manage? To, where did you learn all this? Tricks? No, that that you know, I've I've learned that from one friend of mine in Cape Town. You know that um, the English player, it was Ellen Ball. He wrote a book about coaching, how to maintain the ball, how to attack and how to be aggressive. The important thing is, in soccer, you must be aggressive. Even when you win the ball, you must attack with the ball. 
But nowadays I see these youngsters, they stand still and want to get a pass or whatever, they're not moving. And that, this is one of the important ingredients in soccer. If you have the ball, you must move. And you must move fast to create spaces for the others. Now, how did the players, the young players, react to your philosophy? No, they, they, they were really, they worked together. We work together, we train, and then after training, sometimes we go out on the drawing board, we put them in positions, we say, you are here, so now, if someone is attacking you, what is your, how do, how do, how will you react? And by virtue of that, they start understanding, because we were the one who start using our halfbacks, right and left, it's attackers. And once we do that, when we attack from, say, George is attacking, our left back is moving inside. So our right out or left out is moving backwards. So he creates a space there on the other, side, the other hand. And that space is what we needed. Because when you come with this side with the ball, all attention will be based on that side. And the open space will be created on the top side. So that's how we, we learn and we practice it. And I, I, I don't see nowadays that people are practicing shooting practice. They are not doing um, uh, these um, one-twos. You have to train these things. You have to train because we train. Let's say we take our four backs and we take five attackers. We demarcate the area, so the attackers must beat these four big full fullbacks, and only with one touch. You are not supposed to hold the ball, only one touch. Once you have the ball, it's passed to you, you must pass it over. Only one touch, not two touch, because two touch it will give you time. One touch you must think faster, and the fullback is also trying to get to, to block you, so you must think very fast. And one touch was the best method to, to instill in them. And they have succeeded in that. Was there any specific player whom you built your team around with? Yes, uh, especially with Kavi um, Metusal. He was a midfielder. And, and Kaika. Kaika. Kudeko. Jesus Kudeko. That was our main midfielders. Kaika was good was strong, he can dribble, and he can move forward. And the other one they was very good in defending. So once Kaika is moving forward, he was also closing the space behind, but not far away from Kaika, because they, 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 must, they must communicate. If he lose the ball, Kaika will know where, where, which side he must move, and become Methusalem will know where to start the ball. But the people that time when people were really enjoying football, and they, it's not nowadays when you people lose a game, you start laughing and thinking it's not the end of the world. For us, for us to lose a game, it was like the end of the world. We have to fight for it. And, and one thing which I appreciate from those players, we never lose twice to the same team. Never. African stars never lose a game twice to the same team. You beat us today, next time we either play a draw or we will beat you. It was just like that and they were happy with it. Because if we lose a game, we go back, analyze the game, say where have we gone wrong? Which one make the mistake? And how are we going to rectify that mistake? This was typical like this and it works very 100%. And uh, the cooperation with the team is not me. Carlos is now attacking me, but it was a team effort. All of us, the players, the executives, everyone was involved. And we have to work hard for that. Even our wives was also involved, providing food. It's not like now you people going to a hotel. Huh? Huh? We have to get deep in our pocket to let these people to play, eat food nicely and camping and all this type of thing it was 
money out of our own pockets, but we we're enjoying it because we see the success that we have been achieving. Now, now take us a little bit back to the big days, to the final, the historic final, Davis Cup, Finishers Cup final against Black Africa. Mm. Uh, going into that match, uh, to be quite honest, I think Black Africa was strong. They were the favourites, but you must have come with a great game plan. You move. Uh, boost to the right back, mm. he was normally a right winger. Mm. You have to shuffle a little bit and improvise. Mm. So what was the game plan and how was the motivation during the week? I mean, uh, building up to, to, the, to, the, to the tournament. The motivation was 100% perfect. You know what Black Africa was doing? They only was using two players. Is it Pele? He was over up. And that uh, drilling wizard, which we did, which we was calling him Rappalex. You can do all the money. Which one is it? Is uh, look, they had uh, Stouter, they had Hasim Ingeri, they had Mike Hans, they had they five Ogopep. Mm. No, yes. that, that, that was it. Uh, Migeri was small in defense. There were another guy, a young guy, which was, it was drilling the guys. And we analyzed the game plan, which was very simple, because they, they built the things on the strong mass and, and speed. So instead of using, that's why we take Bush from right out to right back. He have the speed, he have the good ball control, and he can dribble. So we start beating them from behind and Bush was going forward. So we're building your attacks from the back. From behind. And Bush was going with the ball forward. And in front we have Kamutharandu, a speedy. No, it was not the, the No, no, the no, 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 the general, general, yeah, general. No, there was uh, uh, I mean, uh, Kahumbu and uh, Sub and Ben Kawaya yeah. and Kashimune. And Kashimune. Yeah. These guys were very speedy. So once they move and Bush is coming with the ball. So the back game was supposed to try to cover them. And obviously what they didn't realize is that the forward never came back to help the back defense. So Bush was the one, it's an overlap, it's more on attack, and the fullback were forced to cover the, our strikers. So they opened up space like that. It was very simple. And we stick to that. I'm talking about not the Black Africa of today. I'm talking about the Black Africa of yesterday. It was a very good team. It was a very good team. Was Bush, it, and they know how they want to play. So what, what did that victory mean for Africa Stars? And uh, shall we say that was a turning point because after that victory, mm -hmm. Africa Stars became unbelievably strong team between teams left, right and center. Yes, because we built from there our strategy and we built in such a model that it benefit all our players. Whether you are goalkeeper, whether you are right back or whatever, you have to play as a team. You have to defend as a team. And by that, that the, the, Davis, the Davis Cup, that was how we mold them. And from there we just built and improved and improved. And it was good. It was good days, I'm telling you. We were enjoying going to soccer with the belief they're going to beat the team. We, ne we never doubt ourselves about going to beat another team. The only team which had given us was Debra. Because he was good players. Very good, and had a lot of good players. Yeah. And they could also start coaching players from them. I remember Ben Kawaya. Yeah, we poached Oscar them. Mango. Ah, nice. We started coaching from them. Albert Chiero, mm. Karuma. All those, yes. all, those, all those players, we took them from them. And on the other hand, we start scouting around. The African Stars is one of the teams which have gone beyond Racial, uh, or ethnic, ethnic, like, ethnic, or ethnic, ethnic like, yeah. we just we destroy those things because for us, if you're good, you're good, you can come and play. 
We didn't say you are to what, what, what. I know what is here, nice Herero team is what. But if you look on the setup of the history, uh, no, even the setup nowadays, how many players has not learned to handle Herero speaking? But people start to refrain Herero. That is a misplaced perception. Mm. Now, Kela, you were part and parcel of the team during the integration of Miss Race football. Mm. And at the beginning, uh, I think you had a little bit of challenges when playing against the white team, mm. especially the interpretation of the offside rule. I remember the first match yeah. against Remlers yes. at the showgrounds. Um, can you let me talk a little bit about Yeah, about but that you, know, you know, the offside rule, it was very new to us. We, we had to learn also from the offside rule. And we didn't pay too much attention to that because we were thinking we got first players, they can overrun these players. And the Ramblers team was very clever. They were pushing up higher. So they were outcoating us only on the half line. So the, the, the tactic work, you, you can see if you look at, uh, what is it, uh, Sparta? The Sparta United, yes. In, on on, 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 on Wolfis Bay. He was beating all the black teams. I remember all, that game. All the teams were beaten. And the only us were only the other teams. You beat them 5-3, I remember that. And game. then they asked us to come to, to down to them, to the coast, and have a friendly game. I said, no, I know these guys. Just relax. Tell them we can hang on for two weeks. After two weeks, I will be ready. And we train very good. Uh, only uh, the one which have disappointment was Kapushi because he didn't play. There. He didn't play. A dog was playing on the right wing, comes mm. around on the left wing. Yeah. And then what actually happened, Kapushi, we go from here, from the camping, we go to Office Bay. We go and drink. Take his liquid. So I, I just take him out. And, and those. Uh, Whites, they were so sure that they're going to beat us because they were, we were only team unbeaten by them. I remember very well. Yeah. And they also trap what you have been saying. They also start get, getting us with that offside trap. I say, no, that don't worry. You speedy line, just come back. Be in our own half. We put the ball in the open space. So no one is going to catch Kamuthirandu there. And then we start getting the goals. So it's the first black team to beat white team. And they told me maybe they beat Chief Sandos, they beat Black Africa, they beat, beat all Blue the Waters, they beat all the teams. All the, all the teams. We are the ice, only one. High scores, yeah. With high score, 5 2. 5 2 or 3. It was 5 3. 5 3, yeah. Because we only, that's what I said, we realize the offset trap. So, and then we just count it. And the fullbacks were not so fast like our forwards. And it, we, we, we learned, for every game for us, it was a learning curve. You learn every day, you learn your own mistakes, you learn the st strongness of the other teams, and you learn how to manipulate them. Now, you, you seem to have a good, a very good eye for talent. Uh, you scouted Dodo, the Congolese refugee, mm. Americo and Sega. And then there was Willie Rudolph. Mm. These players brought a new dimension to the game. How did you integrate them into the team? No, they, 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 you know, Dodo is a natural good player. And you know what? Uh, I was Sunday in Rundu. It was, uh, what is it, Rundu Chiefs or what? Chikarete. Chikarete was the thing. We I was we, playing for Kuka Tops, I think. Uh, maybe Kuka Tops. Kuka I, Tops. I, I won't remember the name. But I think Chikarete was the guy who was also. Uh, owner was a member of the team and when we checked the players I say oh this one we need him Zeka was not so good he was a good traveler yeah yeah was a good traveler it's too light America he was just an ordinary average, very average, yeah. but we we didn't want to break the bond so to take Dodo alone then you leave the two behind we have to take all three of them. We sleep at the uh, Mororani gate. 
Cigarette wait till we could get the players and he stopped us at the Morani gate. You actually stole the players? Yeah, we stole the players from them. <laughs> yeah, they were refugees. So we offered them, uh, they were staying with me, all three of them. So when we came at Mororani, Chikarete is the one I think was telling the police that we are stealing the players, <laughs> uh, refugees. But luckily, me and Asa have worked, we have the permission to, to take the guys for, for soccer, then to rehabilitate them as they are coming from war and everything. I had to sleep overnight there. The next day, and we, we continue. When they check our papers and everything, then they release us. So it's not, it's not small feeling every time. Hardship was also there. Now, will you read up? When he came in as a center back, mm -hmm. then he changed the style of play, started building from the back. Mm -hmm. What type of player was he, and um, how did he, he, he influence? the other players when they started playing for African South. One could see a lot of change there. Yeah, you know, Willie is a natural leader. You know, if you look on, on our previous games, we never shout in the field. Go there, they go back, rush, go in. When Willie, when we, he came from Atlanta Chiefs. Or Atlanta Chiefs, yeah, from yeah, Comasdal, yeah. From Comasdal. We say, I, I check the guy and say, no, that, that is a center back, what we need. He's talkative, he's talk. Kaiga was a good leader, but he, he's those that he wanted to do everything himself. And we, we, we with Reda, he start doing, go there, go there. Go organizing, back. organization. He, organizing, yeah. he, he start organizing his backs, which was very good. And he was a good player at the end of the day. It's not those boo boo players who just kick forward or whatever. It was cutting the ball. Yeah. Also very good in the air as well. Everything. And he was, once he had the ball, he was checking the players in front of him. Which one is moving in the space, which one is very close to him to get a second pass so that he can come and collect again. You see, that's how we, and he was an intelligent player. No, we, we, we tried to, uh, but uh, the whole thing is that uh, to be successful, you must be aggressive, you must believe in yourself. If you don't have that belief, I don't think you're going to make it. Now, who were your best players? If you mean you have been, you, you, you coached, mentored a lot of players. Mm. Are there any specific players that you will single out as really exceptional? Exceptional? was Ben Kawaya, Bush, Betuel was a goal scorer. A goal finish, scorer. Yeah. He can finish. Yeah. Once he beat the fullback, you know it's a goal. No hassle. And he was, Banda, and, and it's speed as well. It was very quick. And uh, the thing, Banda, it's very difficult to, uh, to, to to distinguish the player because they were multi and as a team. And each individual have done his best. But, but it was good. That time of us was very good. We, we, we really enjoyed soccer at that time. All the teams were, the competi competition was very high. Whether you played against Orlando, or even to, against them, huh? Carlos was. You know, he was playing for African stars. Now he go to angry lines, yeah. angry lines, and then they start fighting against us. But you know why they have gone to 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 to, to start angry lines? All most of the players was African stars players, and the problem was we have two first division teams in one, so they couldn't play. So they, instead of them trying to beat the others. They say, now let's start our own team, then we can play on our own. That's why they, they, he could move out, Kanjambi move out, a lot of them. Most of the uh, players who didn't have a regular playing time. So what would you say, what was your biggest achievements? Um, Refugees, so obviously you enjoyed a lot of success, but is there any particular achievement that you can probably single out? 
at that, but uh, it's very difficult because uh, we enjoyed uh, our time. Achievement was the, because if you look backwards, all the first cups or tournaments, new tournaments in history, you can go backwards. The first, even any cup, new cup, which is team, David, mainstay, whatever, has been taken by African stars. How was the feeling like winning a double during the first year of mixed race football in 1977 when African stars won the Men's State Cup and then won the league title, which was a national league at the time, mm. played against teams like Sparta and the teams mm. from the north. I mean, and the whites were really advanced in terms of... Yeah, no, they were organizing. You played against Ramblers in both the league final mm. and the Men's State Cup final. No, no, we, 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 that we were very... That we were very happy. Very, really, we cannot describe it. It's a big achievement coming from the township and big established clubs and all those type of things. Because the Ramblers was always telling us, yeah, in Escavie, we can play good, but we don't have a field and whatever, they don't have facilities. facilities. So I said, well, well, you have the facilities, but we're going to beat you with your facility. And, and you know that that belief in ourselves was very very good. Now football has evolved as comparing to the old days, mm. and I'm sure that you now and then you watch the old game as well. Mm. Uh, what will say? What is the difference is in terms of talent or maybe the style of play? What you have noticed? No, but I've noticed the people are not hungry. They are not hungry. Our players are not hungry. They are getting a lot of money, but they are not hungry. They, you know, it's, it's very difficult to motivate a player, which is not interesting. It's just, you know, it's end of the month, I'm getting my salary. It's like work. If you work and you're not, you're only interested in your money. So you don't want to achieve anything in life. Well, you achieve it. If you don't achieve it, it's you, it's all right. And I think this is what, uh, I think the, 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 the soccer standard have dropped now, to be fair with you people. I fully agree with you. The soccer standard have dropped now, while we have more opportunities. Now the current crop of players, African stars, I'm sure you was African stars. Hmm. Which one do you think will have made it to the African stars under your mentorship? Uh, any player that would have made even the bench I doubt. I don't see them. I don't see them. You know, as, uh, they were talking, my son was talking about a willow, a willow. And now watching two, three games, and I said, maybe he's, he's on his downhill now. And sticker was good. You can see he got the experience. He can, he got but how would you convey him in that midfield of Kaika, Kiri? All those guys. I mean, mm -hmm. Stika is, uh, is a new generation. He was good before he go to South Africa. From South Africa, but, but you must also uh, take in consideration his age. He's very slow now. If you look nicely, his movement is slow. His reaction is slow. Everything what he's doing is slow. And if you watch him nicely nowadays, and his previous games, we were only aggressive going forward. Now he's more intent playing backwards. Or, or sideways. Mm. Because it, it, that is, for him, if he go forward and he lose the ball, he won't recover fast. That's why he start, you know, he, he understand the game, so he play safe side. Uh, safe, yeah. Either backwards, and he's in the front, so the ball is behind him, so the football can come the other side and it will be behind the ball. That's, that, that is what I have observed from him. Overall, I don't think it's what is the rules there which you can. And we don't have shooters, target shooters, or forward. You can watch the, all our games. We never shoot a ball or score goals from outside the box. Just to, I don't, I don't worry about score. 
for us to shoot on target. So that is a, the, the work of the keeper. It's not, it's not ours. But the either is sideways, the higher, or it's a thin ball to the keeper, whatever. So we don't have people, really strikers who can shoot. Like uh, I We don't have the strikers. Now, 30 years after independence, mm. our football is still amateur. Where do you want to see football in the next few years, especially African stars? Where do you want to see them become fully professional? Or what will you? Yes, this is what we have done. This is what I always talk to my son and hey, I'm telling them nowadays all the teams here on top, they don't have a a vision for the future. All the teams. And you people must not be caught in that quantum. You must think forward that if even if you retire, the team will from there must go forward. And the game is the do the, the goal is professional. We wanted to start at it, but uh, you know with this politics and everything it didn't work out. We are still in the old mold. And FIFA rules is just the opposite. Because I was asking Patrick now, uh, I watched this game with um, Shula Shula, the soccer field. On that field, you cannot play carpet football. Forget about it. You cannot play carpet football. It's bumpy. The one even in the newspaper cup in the Khobabas, Lehari Stadium. How can you play football on that field? Either you must just take the whole grass away, level it, and straight sand. The straight. field is uneven. It's uneven. You can see the hops. Even when you pass a ball on the ground, you can see it's running like this. How do you expect player to control that ball? And this is what I was asking Patrick. Did you people say cuff? got some stadiums which they approve and others not approve. But you play your league game in such a field to qualify for CAF. It's very difficult. And our government is not interested in it. They're not pumping money in fields uh, soccer. It, it, it just take an, an argument, uh, for an argument's sake, uh, take a um, um, Nestor Tobias Boxing Academy. How much money is MTC pumping in them? Yeah? This is for individual player uh, boxes. Yeah? But the academy is getting so much money. So they, that's why they are flourishing. Producing world, uh, world, world, world champions. They, they will produce. You know what, actually, nowadays money is the one who is pushing you forward. Without money, you can have good ideas. You won't succeed. Thank you very much. So with that, we have come to the end of another edition of African Stars Club Legends. So from all of us here, it's cheers.